Greetings YouTube, Skill Incarnate bringing you all the latest indie gaming goodness. Welcome to a new tutorial series on one of the greatest survival games and the most enjoyable co-op games I've ever played, Seven Days to Die. With this series I hope to help both new players to the game and hopefully teach some new tricks to veteran players as well. Similar to my Project Zomboid tutorial videos, each video will focus on a particular topic. Starting with basic survival, crafting, hunting and gathering and cooking. I'll move on to more detailed topics like forge use, mechanics and of course tips for defeating the dreaded Blood Moon Horde. Today's topic will be a beginner's guide for 7 days to die. The guide will act as a primer for new players to the game providing basic advice for early game survival and placing you in a position to survive your first night in the game and plan for your first Blood Moon Horde. Before we begin, please note that my delivery in these video types has been noted to be slow by several viewers. It's something I'm working on improving, but if you're struggling with my talking speed, please feel free to speed up the video. Tip number one, prepare before setting out. When starting any new game in seven days to die, you begin with nothing but your bare hands on your wits. The area you spawn in is a safe place for the first few hours of the day. You can and should take advantage of this and not leave until you've made some preparations. Thankfully, the game now comes with a tutorial which teaches you most of what you need to know and has you making some basic tools and weapons. Start by punching tufts of grass for plant fibre, picking up stones from the ground and punching some bushes for wood. These three resources are used to craft most of the basic items in the game. With these supplies you can use the crafting menu with the tab key. The crafting menu has most of the items you'll need to make in the first day under the first menu titled Basic. Selecting an item you want to craft will display the resources you need to make it in the crafting window. A good tip is to use the search box to find an item to craft. Typing axe for example will give you a list of all craftable axes in the game. This works for any item and is the fastest way to locate items if you know their name. If you follow the tutorial you should have a basic set of fibre clothing, a stone axe, a wooden club, a bow and some wooden frames. The last thing you'll want is some arrows. Search the ground for birds nests which contain feathers which you combine with a stone and some wood to make an arrow. Completing the tutorial highlights the location of the nearest trader. You'll want to settle as close to the trader as possible so you should start heading in that direction immediately. In addition to providing a store where you can purchase vital supplies, the trader offers missions which reward the player with weapons and tools, and also dukes which are the currency of the game. Make sure to gather at least 100 wood and 100 stone before you leave, as you'll need these to make additional arrows and do some repairs to your weapons as well. Tip number two. Hunting and gathering. As you head towards the location of the trader, you should be looking to gather enough food and water to keep you alive for the first few days. This is especially important if you're playing in a group, as every action you take in the game will decrease your food bar. Keep an eye out for birds' nests along the ground, because in addition to finding feathers for crafting arrows, birds' nests contain eggs which can be boiled or eaten raw. However, you should try and save these for advanced cooking recipes which are far more filling. Keep watch for any animals such as rabbits, chickens and the extremely rare deer. When approaching any animal, you should engage stealth mode with the control key. This will allow you to approach close enough to take them down with a well-placed arrow, but far enough to not be spotted. The basic bow is extremely weak, and you'll need to aim well above your target to compensate for arrow drop. It will take a fair bit of practice, hence why you should be gathering feathers for spare arrows. 
but eventually you'll get used to the bow and bag your first kill. In order to harvest an animal you'll need a tool. You can use the stone axe to harvest it but this is extremely inefficient. Harvesting your first animal will give you raw meat, animal fat, animal bones and animal skin. These are all vital in the early game. If you search for knife in your crafting menu, you can make a bone knife from five bones that you should get from an animal. Using this to harvest animals in future will yield a higher amount of resources and can also be used as an emergency weapon. A final note when hunting is that if you hear or see a wolf or bear, run immediately. These animals are a far more deadly threat than the zombies and will tear you to shreds without a gun unless you're skilled or very lucky. It will take several arrows to the head, or multiple strikes from a melee weapon to kill one. Fighting a bear without a high powered weapon is straight suicide, so don't even try. Tip number 3. House sitting in the apocalypse. Your next step is to claim your first home. This will become your base of operation, so you should choose wisely. I recommend, at a minimum, a two-story house that is in relatively good shape, or, if you're lucky, a small building which can be barricaded. Ideally, it should be made of concrete or brick and have minimal damage. It should be within walking distance of the trader. As you head inside, make sure to use your crouch to scout the area. Zombies can be found asleep in buildings and will become active as soon as they hear you, but if you land an attack while they're unaware, you'll do far more damage and can one-shot weaker zombies even with the bow. Take out your bow and carefully search the house, sniping any zombie you find with a headshot from your bow. Check for zombies hidden behind furniture, in corners, in cupboards. Remember that if you hear multiple zombies or start feeling overwhelmed, retreat and draw them out of the house where you can more easily eliminate them with a bone club or knife. With some careful hunting, you'll clear out your new home. Place down your sleeping bag, which you will have from completing the tutorial, as close to the top of the house as you can. This will act as a respawn when you die and more importantly prevents zombies from spawning in your base. You should craft some storage chests and fill them with any loot you collected during the day. Finally, you should make and place a campfire and at least one light source you can see during the night. Craft some candles from animal fat and fiber and place them in your living area. Make sure to only place a few candles in your home as they generate heat which is an invisible metric which you want to keep low as possible in the early game. If it gets too high, you can trigger a zombie horde to approach your base. We'll talk more about the heat map in future videos, but for now, a few candles and a campfire is safe enough for the early game. Tip number 4. Home maintenance and preparing for nightfall. Now you have a home and some storage, it should most likely be a late afternoon. Your goal should be preparing for the first night. This lasts from 10 o'clock to 4 a.m. and during this time all zombies are able to sprint. Unless you have some powerful weapons or transportation like a mini bike, I don't recommend being outside at night. You should spend the last few hours before night gathering wood stone and if possible some food from nearby animals. Make sure you don't wander too far from your base when hunting and then cut down some trees and if possible break down one to two large boulders. You'll want a few hundred wood and around 50 stone for repairs and arrows. Go to the crafting menu and craft some wooden frames. Place these down in any gaps in your house and right click on them with the stone axe in your inventory to make a wooden block. This should also be used to replace any windows in your home as they are easily breached by a horde. Finally, if you have a staircase in your home, you should either break this with your stone axe 
or place down some wooden spikes. Spikes can be found in the building section of your craft menu or by searching for the term spikes. They do heavy damage to hordes and are a cheap defense in the early game but without the proper tools you won't have the resources to build many so I prefer to wall off my base, destroy staircases to the second story or just set up on the roof of my home. Zombie hordes are pretty rare in the early game so if you're smart and quiet you should survive your first week without incident. During the night, just remember to keep an ear out for zombie voices or footsteps. You should be able to hear approaching hordes. If you crouch and enter stealth mode and don't do anything, hopefully they will continue on without incident. The key to surviving nights in the early game is to avoid noise and keep an ear out for activity outside your base. Tip number five, use a night to prepare. While you wait for daybreak, you should be using your campfire to prepare food and water. Start by adding some wood into the fuel part of the campfire and turn it on. I recommend only placing a small amount of fuel in the fire. Generally not more than 10 minutes worth as prolonged use of campfires will generate heat and therefore attract zombies. You will have access to a list of recipes with the ones you can cook highlighted. If you collected any dirty water, you can select the boil water recipe to purify. You can also make charred meat from five pieces of meat. These recipes aren't the best use of your food, but will keep you alive while you look for better cooking tools. If you are lucky enough to locate a cooking grill or cooking pot, you can combine meat and bottled water to make boiled meat, or combine two eggs and five meat to make bacon and eggs if you placed a point in the cooking skill. Remember to keep an eye on the red and green bar at the bottom of your screen, which represent your food and water levels. It's important to maintain these, otherwise you'll suffer a debuff to your stamina, which can be potentially fatal, and eventually starve to death, which is definitely fatal. With daybreak, you should immediately head to the trader and begin completing missions which include clearing a building of zombies, locating a package for the trader, or digging up buried treasure. In addition to allowing the player to loot a location and find treasure, the money from the trader can be used to supply you with food and medicine. The goal is to stockpile jukes, food, water, tools, and if you're lucky, some guns. You'll need all of these to survive the Blood Moon Horde, which arrives every seven days. We'll talk more about the Horde survival in a future video. And that was it for my beginner tips video for seven days to die. Following this guide should keep you alive for the first few days in the game, and begin your preparations for the first Blood Moon Horde. We're only scratching the surface of the game, and I have many more subjects to discuss, so please stay tuned for future episodes. As always, if you have any further questions or any tips of your own for the game, feel free to reach out in the comments. Finally, I have to credit my good friend and Twitch streaming buddy, Sunny Jim, and JC28, our resident 7 Days to Die expert and a criminally underrated YouTuber. I'll include a link to his channel in the comments, it would be great if you guys could check him out. If you find this information helpful, I'd really appreciate a like or a subscribe as it really helps the channel. And you can check out my Twitch channel as well where we stream 7 Days to Die. Until next time, Skill Incarnate, out.